The Nigerian Bar Association of, Ni of Nigeria uh, really put a show up this week. For instance, on Tuesday, they boycotted the court bar ceremony of 4,711 new lawyers that were admitted into the legal profession. Why? Because they want a member of the family to recuse his position because of an issue, an allegation against him. This morning, we want to see how this is affecting the judiciary in the country and what needs to be done to quickly address the situation so that it does not really uh, escalate beyond what we can see just as ordinary Nigerians. This morning on the show, I'm being joined by a legal practitioner. Uh, it's Gabriel Udafi. Gabriel, once again, so nice to have you on the program. I said you look like allergy today. You are not looking <laughs> any way, <laughs> anyhow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> today. Uh, you, your response was very good. I like Thank it. you for having me. I like looking like a Nigerian. Yes. And, uh, so I decided to to look like a Nigerian today, not as a lawyer, so that uh, so a lawyer my first so that my first appearance does not uh, make you put me on the judgment seat. And then you have to be there. You are, in this, you are in the chair already this morning. What is going on? What is this between the NBA and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Olani? What is going on? It's, uh, it's quite unfortunate. And it shows that every aspect of our lives, we need to find a way to manage ourselves properly mm. so that we can showcase our best to the entire world. Mm. How would you classify it? How would you assess it? 4,700 plus lawyers have been called to the Nigerian bar. It ought to be a moment of celebration for yes. the profession, for the new entrant to the bar, their family, their relations. It used to be a very uh, glamorous event when, when you have been part of that exercise before. You see, the, everybody is happy, the profession is happy because it's like a mother giving birth to a newborn. Like you are, you are expecting Christmas now. All Christians are expectant, they want to celebrate the birth of Christ. That is how the NBA should be expectant when new lawyers are to, to be called to the Nigerian bar. But in the last, uh, in the last uh, uh, year or so, it's not been well with the NBA. Mm. There is this constant uh, attrition and a conf a, a, a conflagration between the NBA and the body of benches. benches. Since the emergence of Chief uh, Wali Olanikweku, SEA and OFRO as the chairman of the body of benches. And I think that the, the straw that broke the camel's back was the boycott of the NBA from the exercise on the 7th and on the 8th of yes. uh, November when they said that, look, uh, until he steps aside as the chairman of the body of benches, uh, the NBA will not be part of that exercise. And so we saw it. How with the lawyer, how the new entrant felt, uh, they didn't have the opportunity of the, of the president of the bar to speak to them, to welcome them to their ordinary domain, is what I would just best imagine. But I know that the, the young ones, they, they are nonetheless happy. They have their certificate or license to practice. Mm. They have been registered at the, uh, at the <laughs> Supreme Court as, as uh, solicitors and advocates of the Supreme Court. But I think the NBA is passing through a turbulent time and yeah. that there is the need for us to all sit down and calmly look at the issues and know how to move the, issue, uh, the, the, uh, the body forward. If any individual's interest is in conflict or is a, a barrier to the profession, I think that we we'll, at some point need to drop those in individual interest and see how we can project NBA Absolutely. as a collective rule. Because if the NBA is in this area, then how, what do you expect of the ordinary Nine, associations? Yeah. Like uh, the Market Women Association, the uh, uh, National Union of Road Transport Workers, and all of that. I think we should, exu we should lead by example as the NBA. That's my uh, impression, and that's my position. Let's let you know that it will be the second time in four months that the Nigerian Bar Association has called on the uh, Chief Wally who is, of course, the, man, the chairman of the Body of Benches, BOB. Uh, pending investigations by the BOB of allegations of professional misconduct involving a former staff in his chamber, Ms. Adekumbi Ogunde. Uh, to an average person who is watching from afar, you know, one would say that he must go to equity, must do so, you know, in, in clean hands. And one would say if Chief Olani has not really said anything other than the fact that he was 
just, he's just been doing what he has to do, you know, as being provided for him under the, the law where he's the position that he occupies. But some say that maybe for the interest of the entire body of the judiciary in the country, he could recuse himself and then seek uh, legal means of proving his innocence or straightening things up with the NBA so that things can move forward in this country. Uh, many people are worried that we're going to an election year and if the judiciary within itself is divided, how do we now start to handle things that may come from election, electoral issues on its own? Talk less the day-by-day -day activities uh, that the Nigerian people have to interface with the judiciary with. Um, in your view, you think that Chief Olani Kwebu should recuse his position and see how things would go with the NBA? First off, I, I want to mention a few things before I, I, I attempt to, to answer your question. Okay. Because that's a very tough one. Uh, Chief Wolelani Kweku, fantastic advocate. One of the best that this country has produced. You need to see him in court. You need to see the way he marshals his point. You need to see how he carries himself. Gorgeous, prestigious, uh, fantabulous. You can use all the adjectives to qualify him. He's a lawyer's lawyer, in my reckoning and mm -hmm. in, my, in my estimation. And nobody takes that away from him. And uh, he's not a man that uh, is scared of any legal duel. He does it so effortlessly and effectively, thereby ca uh, carving out a niche for himself. He's one of the best lawyers this country has produced, and we must give that to him. Secondly, he's also a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association. Yeah. If I remember very well, between uh, 2002 or so, or 2004, I think he handed over in 2004 in just uh, yes, in just and uh, he served the Nigerian Bar Association as a president. If my memory also serves me right, I think it was also at one point a secretary of the bar. So he's a complete barman and who mm. should also have the interest of the bar at heart. He has grown from being a barman and to be a respected member of the bar. For him to have been nominated and become a member of the body of benchers, you will also know and that. And even the chairman. Yes. Now, I think the problem that has arisen is a product of him being the chairman of the body of benches. Benches, yeah. Yes. These issues did not just start today. Before the year, there can be an email to Saipan that is causing the ripples and crisis all over the place. I remember Lucius Wos, who the late Lucius Wos, who died sometimes this year, had written a letter in February to the MBA, even taking Chief Wally to court to say that he should not be allowed to ascend to the position of the chairman of the body of benchers. Then the other combi issue has not even come up at all. What was an issue then was that there was a judgment according to uh, uh, Lucius Wonsu in which the Supreme Court imposed a fine of 30 million naira on Wale himself and in describing the, the step he took in that case as not being palatable. Mm. So he felt that, look, if you have to be the chairman of the body of benchers, which is the highest organ that regulates legal practice in Nigeria, that should enforce ethics, that should enforce uh, 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 professionalism, then having such a record would mean that you do not meet the criteria under Section 3 of the NBA uh, uh, Legal Practitioners Act that says that anybody who must be a member of uh, the body of benchers must be of such distinction that your record should be untainted like a virgin with the white robe, mm -hmm. like the Christian would say, that those who are going to see Jesus must be virgins whose robe have been washed no, clean. No, no, that's, that's not in the Bible. I have to confess, no. There's no way in the what, Bible what part of the that Bible has written. I'm a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> so you, know, you, you must wear the white robe and you must be untainted. Mm. It's only holy people that can see God, my sister. See. Very holy. Very you, holy. You, you, you know me so. So, so let, let's move away from that. Absolutely. This is not a this is not a religious no, discourse. I always like to spice my discussion up with other examples. The question is that at this stage, having gotten to that height, I've as I've as I've enumerated with Chief Wally, I think that when people begin to raise questions, then one has to listen. First of all, they are not saying he has committed any act of criminality. These are not criminal allegations we, these are we, these let, are let me come in there no, let, if you if you there's a reason i have to let, come let in there learn, because of learn. your statement yes so that you miss on it yes 
This Miss Ogunde, yes. Ogunde yeah. uh, was actually a leading partner. Is a partner at, at, at in the in chamber. The office. And she's accusing that Chief Olani Pekun influenced judges to deliver favorable judgments. Yes. For his clients. I'm coming to that. That's huge. I'm, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. You see, first of all, Ogunde is a lawyer called to the Nigerian bar. He's also a partner in, in Chief Wale Olani Pekun's chambers. Granted, that is why I say that they are not act that this Ogunde's issue is not a conduct that was committed by Wale himself. If you look at it, they are saying take responsibility for what your partner did. You know, in crime, you don't take, if for instance, I have a son and he commits a crime, you are not going to charge me for it. Mm -mm. That is legal. But ethically, you see, this is where the profession is a little bit different from other, 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 other uh, parts of life. There is an ethical burden on every lawyer. And ethical issues are not legal issues. They are called moral principles that affect the standing of any group of people. And law is one profession that thrives on ethics, first of all, particularly for judges and lawyers. That is why you see that a judge by his office is not expected to mingle the way I would mingle. It is an ethical issue. How would people see you? If, for instance, a judge is seen on this show expressing an opinion on any public issue, because you don't mm. know when that issue will be brought to your table. That is why you see that judges are ethically required to absorb themselves from the, from the interaction in the society, so that when a matter comes to them, they can sit in a position of authority and say that this is my view. After he has given that pronouncement on the, on the, on the bench or the judgment seat, he moves away. So it's, it's an ethical issue, and that is why I think that, look, as a leader who has led the profession to the extent that every first name that mm. is called when a topical issue in law is being considered is Chief Oleola Nipeku, that's with regard to the good work he has done. He should have been able to say, look, not for myself, my own, yeah. not for myself, but for the sake of the profession, I, I should give room. Okay. So that because this is not going to belittle you anyway, you have gotten to the pinnacle of your, and the, of and your that's profession. The, issue. the world reports that barely 48 hours to the NBA, the, uh, the call to bar ceremony, uh, that the, uh, the, the present president, Ikiawi, did write to the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ariwola, asking that uh, you know, Chief Alani Pegu should recuse and allow uh, you know, uh, Justice the, the Vice Chairman. Uh, to take uh, over the proceedings, which didn't happen. Uh, over the, what, what do you think uh, would be the outcome? I'm not trying to prejudice, to be prejudice what could happen in days to come, but for a lot of people that are paying attention like us as to what would be the effect it would have so far on the operations within the judiciary, has it affected the judiciary in any way? What impact has this impasse between MBA and the chairman of BOB uh, have on the generality of the body I, of lawyers? I would say that this is not the first time this position was taken by the MBA. I, I think around July or so, the immediate past chairman, uh, president of the MBA, Olumide Apata, Apata, had written such a letter and also directed it to the attention of the body of ventures where he called that Chief Olela should be asked to recuse himself. Hmm. So this is his, the second time coming, and it was, was the basis of this same Ogunde's uh, action uh, that uh, a, a, an email went out telling, bring your case to our firm, our boss is this, he can do this, he can do this, he, he, he sits with the judges and all of that and all of that, which was highly unnecessary, uh, which was, because well, they, I can't remember any case, any topical case in this country that Wale has not participated in, at least in the last 15 years to date. So there was no, there was nothing to prove. There is nothing to, to be proven by Wale any longer in the legal profession. But I think that the profession is on trial. Okay. And the senior members of the profession, and there are other stakeholders in this business, in this law business. Mm. There is uh, the, uh, the body of uh, senior advocates of Nigeria, we we'll call them BOSAN. They are the body that is comprised of all senior advocates of Nigeria, they need to step in and intervene. Unfortunately, unfortunately, 
The tenure of the chairman of the BOB is just for a year, statutory training. So which means that in another Let's one yes, in another one year, uh, I think less than a year from now, he will be handing over as the chairman of the body of benchers. But, but that's actually the issue that the MBA really doesn't really want to see through until <laughs> he's able to clear himself. And another issue that the MBA says it is worried about is because some notable people members are not saying anything. And they seem to be keeping quiet. That is, that the, is, that is, the, that is the point I'm making. The point I was trying to make is that, like that uh, body of senior advocates of Nigeria, Bosan, they should be able to sit down and say, okay, let us weigh in. Because look at Mikhail, who's the present president of the NBA. He's a, he's a senior advocate of Nigeria. Wally is a senior advocate of Nigeria. So they also have another forum within With the, the NBA yes. where they also meet and they articulate issues for the overall development of the legal pro pro uh, profession in Nigeria. I think the challenge everybody has is that, look, if it were not a Wale Olani Peku, for instance, will all these other stakeholders have kept quiet? Oh, will they not have taken a position as it were? And I think that if we are, we are trying to say that politicians to reform themselves and the low level groups should mm -hmm. also reform themselves, we of the noble profession, because the law is looked at as a noble profession. It's actually categorized mm -hmm. as the profession for the nobles. That is why you see that we are fully robed with beep, with a beep, and, mm -hmm. and a wig. In actual sense, if you look at the oriental use of the beep, it's only worn by the nobles. You remember the burial of the Queen of, uh, Queen of uh, England, England before the ascension of, to the throne of uh, Charles III. You saw that a lot of people who were of the noble class wore bibs, very glamorous bibs, during the exercise by reason of the function of the fact that they are nobles. So Nigerians or lawyers in Nigeria should also see themselves as, as nobles. Like you said, the bar, the legal profession is on trial by reason of these issues. And mm. I think that both all the relevant stakeholders, MB has taken a position. And the general counsel of the bar has not come out to say that the position taken by the president of the NBA is not the position of the NBA. This is a former president of the Nigeria Bar Association who close to about, uh, this is uh, 2002, close to about uh, uh, 10, years, uh, 10 years ago, also handed over as uh, the president of the hmm. Nigeria Bar Association. Body of senior advocates of Nigeria will also call on them. Can we find a way to salvage this situation? Like you said, if the hope of the common man is reposed in the judicial uh, sector, yeah. why should those who operate the system not realize this and know that, look, we owe a duty to the society, which is the ethical issue. The ethical issue, like you said, is that you cannot come to equity if your hands I'm are not clean. clean. And, and you know, let me come here. Um, according in his speech during the call to buy, Chief Olani Pekun did say that uh, although the Legal Practitioner Disciplinary Committee, LPDC, is under his chairmanship, so even if he has to, if any disciplinary action has to be taken even before he's taken, I feel that people feel he should first and foremost have acknowledged the mail and addressed it squarely, and then if there's any need for any disciplinary action to be meted out or to be considered at all, he should not be the judge in his own case which is one, one, one reason that many people believe that the NBA is pushing for him to recuse himself and allow another person to assume that position while he's been investigated and then he can now uh, you know, clear through his case and move forward from here. Um, my question is, in days to come, what, what, do you, what are you expecting, for instance, of the CJN? Because we're yet to hear anything from him officially on this particular matter and it's getting cold on the table. It's getting so cold on the table. What are you looking for in days to come? Uh, before, before, I, I think uh, ab about some months back, the immediate uh, past uh, chairman of the Legal Practitioners Disciplinary Committee, Emmanuel uh, Okala, uh, Okala, SEN, resigned. And the reason he, his letter was all over the place. The reason he resigned was that there were some cases, there were some disciplinary cases that the, uh, the committee, the disciplinary committee was handling that members of the body of benchers wanted to go a particular way. Hmm. And he felt that 
his independence as a disciplinary body under the body of ventures was, was being, being impaired. Mm. And to that extent, that was why he threw in his resignation. And one, two, three of his members of that committee also threw, no, threw in his story. I did a disciplinary case before that body. I addressed that body. But because of those issues, they, because they could not proceed as a result of the crisis, a lot of us did not get the decision of the disciplinary committee until recently that they are calling us to come back and address the issues. Like you said, the Legal Practitioners Disciplinary Committee, LPDC, is under the body of ventures. In yeah. fact, if you look at their letter-headed paper, it's headed body of ventures, then the Legal mm -hmm. Practitioners yeah. Disciplinary Committee. And we have a principle in law, Nemo Judax in Kasasua. You cannot be a judge in your own cause. Okay. And if you want to apply that principle, you would want to believe that or so, uh, be, uh, think that any member of the body of ventures whose associate, mm -hmm. law firm, or business pa legal partner is involved in any disciplinary proceeding should not even be, should recuse Keep himself so. from the body of ventures. But the CJN pending when the investigation is done and mm. concluded. But the position of the CJN, the reason why you cannot drag the CJN into it is that at the end of the day, if these issues become legal mm. and they are taken to the court, if the CJN takes a position right now, it will, it will also fall into the same trap of saying, oh, you had already taken a position before. So how do you ensure the independence of the judiciary in respect of that particular let, issue? Let, let me come in now. Yes. Would it have been better if uh, perhaps Chief Olani Kwekun had uh, replied to the mail, uh, possibly the judiciary won't be watching its dirty linen in the open, possibly uh, because Chief Olani Kwekun say you're sensationalizing this, you're publicizing this, you're making a noise out of this, and you still want me to do what you want to do. You know the right thing to do, but the NBA is saying we did the right thing first. We sent you a mail, you refused to respond to, to, to the mail, and th th that was the reason why they had to come out. It's in the open already. What can the judiciary do at this point in time? Because he, it would seem to a lot of people from what he said, like, okay, maybe I'm being, you know, maybe this has been politicized. My enemies, as an average Nigerian would say, at work. That's what you could deduce from his uh, statements during the call to bar ceremony. Um, as we round off on this segment, what are the immediate things that the MBA should do knowing at the end of the day that it will still bounce back to the entire judiciary in the country. What I, what I would suggest and what I would advise is that the personalities involved, they are very big personalities. You the, wanted to say powerful, am I right? They are very powerful personalities. Okay. <laughs> so you have put the word on No, because I saw you. That, I was straight <laughs> to... You are reading my list, yes, right? Yes, I was straight to they do are, that. They are, they, are, they are powerful. Okay. You, you can't... It, the, the president of the Nigerian Bar Association is a big and huge office in this country, anywhere in the world. Uh, chairman of the body of ventures is a huge and big office anywhere in the world, and they are powerful people. But what I want to advise all the parties is that, look, it's not about you. When you now make personalized issues of public interest, like giving an address in the, body of, in the court bar ceremony, and it's about you or reference to you, it means that it has moved from public interest to personal to interest. Personal, yeah. I would advise that parties, I, in my honest opinion, Wally should just, on his honor, do the nation a great service. I'm not accusing him of any crime and all of that. He said, look, this is not about me. This is about the profession. I watched, uh, I watched uh, the Pope this morning when he was uh, on the Feast of uh, Immaculate Conception That's yesterday. True, yes, he was praying for Ukraine. And he was in his course of prayer, he broke down in tears. He's far away Rome. He's not in uh, Ukraine. Even those that are closer to Ukraine that hold political office, they are not as passionate, as touched as the Pope is. He was crying. He said, Lord, our Lady of Immaculate Conception, intercede for the people of Ukraine because this loss of life is inhuman. Mm. And I think that that is the position that we must learn to emulate as leaders in Nigeria. Mm. At some point, it's not anything about you. It's everything about the system. It's everything about the legacy you want to leave behind. It's everything about the name that you want to leave behind. It's everything about the history that we want to be written. It's everything about the reference point 
and the, and the precedent, they say in law, that we want to create. If one voice has said, step down, a second voice has said, step down, a third voice has said, and I'll count them. Lucius Wosu said, don't be. Olumide uh, uh, Akwata said, we don't, uh, don't be. And uh, the present NBA president is saying, don't be. I don't think that we should sensationalize it and personalize it to an extent. Mm. You have attained the best that this profession has had to offer and what is left for you to pursue. Well, perhaps Absolutely that, nothing. Perhaps that would be the reason why he's like, I've started so strong, I'm doing this so strongly, I won't end you this know, it's, way. It's, uh, it's uh, always about the problem in, in, in Nigeria. Hmm. It's about me, myself, and I. Not what, how does it affect the overall well being of the people. Of the, of the society. And let's also let you know that uh, the Pope would definitely cry because uh, Ukrainian authorities had said that 13,000 soldiers were confirmed to have died in the war invasion of Russia in Ukraine. And that's not to even count the, 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 the people, the citizens, whose lives you know, had been lost in, in that war. Our hearts, once again, are with those people there. Um, let's talk, as we round off, let's talk about the fact that I had a discussion with a friend on Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, who said, look, a lot of things are being stuck around you know, courts in the country, especially at the Supreme Court level. What is going on? Does it have anything to do with what is going on within the NBA, between the NBA and uh, you know, the body of benches? Or there is more, because there are a lot of pending cases, some of them political, that may really you know, truncate the 2023 general elections if attention is not paid to them on time. Certainly not. I'm a lawyer and I go to court. I'm a courtroom lawyer. Uh, I, court is my business. I was in court yesterday. I was in court on Monday. I was at the Supreme Court on Monday. Okay. And, I, and I understand perfectly the issues that you have raised. It has nothing to do with this conflict between okay. uh, uh, the body of benchers and, and the Nigeria Bar Association. It has nothing to do with it at all. But I think where the problem is, my, uh, if you ask my honest view, mm. is that politicians have decided to corner every aspect of our life. And so, if you look at the innovation they brought in by the fourth alteration to the Constitution, under Section 285 of the Constitution and Section 84 of the Electoral Act, you see that they said, once it's an elect pre-election matter or an election-related matter, Not it has to take priority. You have to conclude it in 180 days. Now, you now see desperation on the part of political parties Absolutely. and non-members of political parties, lawyers like me, who now shop for all those pre-election matters and take them to court. And no matter how frivolous that issue is, because there is a constitutional mandate that you have to give it utmost priority, the, ju right. the judges they step down the issues. A lot of our colleagues are judges, and we discuss some of this issue. Yeah. They said this, this is an absolute pressure that the political class through the National Assembly has succeeded in imposing on the judiciary. One, the number of judges, how many are they all over Nigeria? They are very limited. The number of cases, I was looking at the case that was filed, I was, I was reading a, a, report, a case that was filed a, a, in, in Abuja. Uh, this year alone, at the Federal High Court in Abuja alone, you have close to 2,000 cases that have been filed. Mm. How many judges are, are sitting at the Federal High Court in Abuja? Probably they may not be more than eight or nine, and they have to attend to those cases. And sometimes you see some cases, they are I mean, like this. The file. Lawyers are not helping the system. Our attitude as a people is not helping dispensation of justice. That, that is why I, I agree with the CJ when he made a proposition that, look, an amendment should be proposed to the uh, 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 Supreme Court Act and the Constitution such that a number of these cases that come to the Supreme Court have no business getting there, there at all. There in the all. first place. At all. Because I was at the Supreme Court on Monday, a panel of seven, which is the highest court, sat, and more than five cases were thrown away because they said, this is not a case you should have brought in the first place. In fact, oh. before that court, two millionaires was even awarded against a lawyer for even attempting to, to bring, bring such a similar case. Like, how dare you even bring such to us? So lawyers are not helping the, 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 uh, the dispensation of justice in this country. We must learn to advise our client that, look, these are not the kind of cases you should pursue. I, spoke, I speak to a number of my colleagues that are judges and they tell me that, look, you lawyers, you make, us, you make our work so difficult. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying it to our, our colleagues right now, there are some cases that people should not have even initiated in the court in the first place. But like these political cases where you have strangers 
filing cases on behalf of political parties and using them to look for who to buy them and own them. That's yeah. the problem in this country. Thank you so much, uh, Gabriel Udwafi, for being part of the program today. Always nice to hear your perspective on issues. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, and uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, we should be saying, I mean, it's Christmas. Let, let's not forget that this Christmas is, you know. <laughs> it's Christmas already. Thank you so much. And that's our show for today. We want to thank everyone who's been part of it and uh, let the conversations continue. Uh, we're looking forward to peace within the judiciary uh, where we have those who we put our last hope in as a people when it comes to seeking justice in their hands. So they, there must be peace within that home. Uh, nothing personal, as Gabriel said earlier on, we should just look, look at the collective interest of all so that our system will go smoothly. I want to thank you so much for watching us since Monday till now. And we promise, by the special grace of God, be back again on Monday when we bring in another edition of the program. Remember, you can get in touch with us uh, through our social media handles to share with us any story, as well as your view on the program and all the things that we do on this station. And on behalf of the entire team, we wish you a beautiful weekend and happy birthday to uh, my niece. We're going to be chopping something tomorrow. I hope so it's actually not, a birthday yesterday. I hope you're not leaving me out. No, 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 I'm not leaving you. <laughs> happy she, birthday to you. Is she, in that hour you did. she turned 10 on Thursday. I didn't greet you yesterday. You know Auntie Shem loves you so much. But tomorrow is the dance. Eh? We dance the dance and Just collect chop. cake from Auntie Shem, please. Plenty of, you know I love cakes. <laughs> Many happy returns of the day. That's the show. If you're celebrating today, we love and we celebrate you. Uh, be moderate in all that you do and uh, stay safe. Good morning.